Welcome to this week's Ask GMBN, where we get to answer all your questions, but you've just got myself, Mr. Samson. No Mr. Ashton, no Mr. Donahue, no Mr. Doddy, just me. And I'm gonna kick it off with the first question of the week, and that's coming in from Leo Maggie, and it's all about enduro bikes. And he's wondering what bike he can get for 1,600 euros. Well, there's the internet, you can search that all day and finding a good bike for you, but you can't really get to test it. So I recommend going to your local bike shop because there, they're gonna have a look, a big range of bikes for you to look at, potentially test, and you can pick their brains and knowledge of what bike suits you. There you go, plus they stock the bike, depending on what area you live in, they'll stock that bike. So if you live in the mountains, they'll stock a bike for the mountains and all such things. Just go and rack their brains. Next question coming in from Ryan Rothford. It says, I have a boardman and it has no hole in the frame to put a wire and I can put a drop post in. Please help. Well, I'm sorry, but you can't really run an internal dropper post. But that means you doesn't mean you don't can't actually run a dropper post. You can. You can run ones with external cable routing. That means you're gonna have to cable tie and tape it to your frame. It's a little bit ghetto looking, but you are gonna have a dropper post. But if you don't want all those cables on your frame and ghettoness, then you can get a dropper post that has a lever just under the saddle. But that means you're gonna have to take your hand off the bars under your saddle, grip it, lift it, and push it down depending on where you want it. But you have got the benefits of having a dropper post. Right, next question coming in from ZRC RC channel. It says, what is the model and brand of Suma Sam's muscle bike? Because I freaking love that thing. Plus, what is a good budget for a fat bike? Well, Suma Sam's bike is a Canyon Dude CF 9.0 and it is a full carbon beast. And it only comes in at 12.4 kilos, so super light. You didn't think that. But depending on how much you want to spend, really, they range from 500 pounds all the way up to 2,000 pounds. Whereas the Canyon Dude is 2,700 pounds, I think. But it just depends on how much you want to spend on a fat bike. So the more money you spend, the lighter the bike's going to get. It all depends on you know premium products and all that. But if you haven't seen the video, take a look at this. <laughs> you didn't think I had it in me, did you? Mm, I got more in the tank. Fatty out of breath. Oh. I really am. I've lost too much weight. Let's drop in Australia. You can get it going on. <laughs> Mad. Right, Sumo Sam can move his way around quite well on a fat bike. Moving on to the next question comes in from Wayne and says, will you guys ever come to Australia? If so, where would we go? Well, EWS and Tasmania look pretty sick and fun to look at and to ride potentially. Uh, there's a few bike parks in Australia. We could potentially come over and explore, maybe do a massive epic ride, maybe an adventure ride. We'll see, we'll see. We'll have to ask the right people for that one. Um, moving on to the next question. Adam Turner, after watching Neil's presenter video, he saw that he was collecting a lot of his MBUK front covers. Do they still collect them and or do any presenters still collect anything? Well, I've had a few front covers on MBUK and Dirt Magazine. I've collected them because they're quite a, a special thing. You're on the front cover of a magazine. You're going to potentially sell that magazine your face, your writing. So I've collected loads of things, but one thing I do collect is all my old dirt jump frames. I have loads of old dirt jump frames from, from the day one, I've got it, all the way through, and they're just clogging up my dad's garage, so he's getting a bit annoyed, so I might have to move them. Right, moving on. Right, next question coming in from Dave, and it's a bit of a technical one. It says, any chance of some videos Videos filmed with a 360 degree camera. Well, ha, watch the space because there's some going to be coming. And I did have a play with some when I did Nine Nights. So take a look at this video. You got a whole week to find a crazy way to take a photo of yourself up in the air. It doesn't really have to be like on the big jumps. It can be like on the flow line or something else. But I won it last year with this picture. Sick, isn't it? Big no foot can indie. I put the GoPro on my foot with loads of duct tape this year. I'm going with this as the Rhino Pole. It's a spinny mount, but 
I'm going to do a backflip, take my hands off, and hopefully that one is going to capture everything. And then I'm going to enter it to that contest, and hopefully the riders like it and they judge it, judge it and they vote me. Because it's going to be the best photo, obviously. Pretty unique video with some experimental camera angles. I do love experimenting with camera angles. Right, moving on to the next question. It comes in from Robbie White and it's a knee pad one. It says, should I wear my knee pads even if I don't have long enough shorts and get the Aduro gap? Well, ultimately, yes. Safety over style for sure. I always go out wearing my knee pads. I never go out not wearing knee pads. And I'm not too worried on what I look like to an extent, really. I guess you could ask for a longer pair of shorts for your Christmas present or a birthday or just a gift or save up to get some. But no, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, you know, not wear knee pads when going out riding. I always wear my knee pads. Next question, coming in from Thomas Ashcroft and he says, I'll be the one to ask this one. What do you think of Sam Pilgrim's high bike downhill e-bike? Well, for first glimpse, I like it. It looks cool, it's a little bit heavy, but the way he's been riding it out there in Croatia on the UCI Downhill World Cup track, he's flying. And the thing is, when you get all the way to the bottom of that track, you can just pedal all the way to the top and do it again. What's there not to like about that? I'm slowly getting into e-bikes. I've been doing a little bit of stuff with EMBN just to see what it's all about. And I'm, my, my, uh, my mind's changing on all of it. My uh, outlook is looking a lot different about e-bikes. Moving on to the next one. This one's coming in from MTB. And it says, help, I can't bunny hop. I've tried to move about and feel a little motion, but I just can't do it. Any advice? Well, I do get this question a lot. How can I bunny hop? How can I get my bike off, off the ground and over logs and all such things like that? Well, Neil does have a good theory on how to get the perfect bunny hop, and it's called the L shape. So basically you're getting your body weight to come down and then you're moving it back. But whilst you're doing that, you'll be lifting yourself off the ground. Also, there's another technique that is pretty cool to use, and that is by putting a little log or stick or brick or stone, whatever on the floor, and using your front wheel to bump over it, just to you know bump your front wheel up and get your back wheel to hit it to lift yourself up. But we've got a video on this, so take a look at this. Nice one, Neil. Now we're gonna take that simple move to the log itself. And the idea is that you lift the front cleanly over the log, so you've got to think about your timing. Front wheel over and then just let the back wheel bump over. Don't worry about it. So now for the rear wheel lift. Um, let's pretend you've already done the manual. Now you need to send them hips up and forward towards the handlebars. Get your toes down and scoot back against the pedals a little bit. Now to the exciting bit. We're gonna link the two things together. So it's putting this log to use. Front wheel over and then the back. Get that bit dialed, then go a little bit faster. You'll have to do the two things a bit closer together and that will become a bunny hop. Right, quick fire on my favorite bit, but Mr. Ashton's not here to read the questions for me to fire out the answers as well as him, so I'm gonna have to do it all on my own. I'm gonna start off with MTB scene. It says, has Doody ha, left the channel for Tech One or is he still on both? Well, Doody, AK Doddy, is still on both channels and he's still there, so don't worry. Next, Liam says, does Blake look like KC Neistat? No, I don't think so. Not wearing sunglasses. Sam Taylor says, phone in my pocket or the bag? Well, in my pocket. I like to ride with my phone in my pocket. If I fall off and destroy it, my fault. Next one's from Jared Sale. Is Blake heading back to the Mega Avalanche to say, yes, I am. And I'm hoping to bring Neil and Doddy, potentially Mr. Ashton as well. And hopefully start from the snow this year. Ha, <laughs> missed out last time. Harris Lipton. Is, what is a good downhill bike? Well, I like my Scott Gambler and I like my Canyon Sender. So one of them, potentially. Next, Archie Dennis. I'm building a pump track in my garden. Any tips? <sighs> Lucky man. Wow. Well, any tips? Pump bumps. They can get really wrong. So you want to put a bike's length between. So the center of your bike is the one bump and then sit your wheels in each hole between each pump. There you go. Uh, Garrett Van, does Blake plan to do any more bike dice? Can the subscribers pick the tricks and the bikes for the dice? 
Yes, you can. Let me know in the comments down below. That's the end of the quick fire round. <sighs> Damn, I wish I had some more quick fire round questions. Maybe next time. Correct me if I'm wrong. Wow, this is where you guys send in videos of you potentially doing something wrong, and we're gonna try and correct you and give you a few tips on how to progress that situation that you got yourself into. And this one's coming in from Nathan. He's out in Australia. He says, here's myself and my fiance riding a wall ride. Take a look at Nathan. This is his one. He's doing it. Let me take a look at it. Oh, he's got it. Oh, he went a bit high there. Oh, he slid it up. But maybe that's because you were slowing down. I'm going to watch that again. Got good technique. He leaned into the wall. Yeah, he was just slowing down. So he, he had good technique. Nathan, you got really good technique. But let's take a look at your fiance. Oh, for a start, it looks like the beginning shot is not very good. She's coming in. Good speed. She's going around. Not too high. Oh! She, like, hung herself on a washing line. That was pretty crazy. Well, let me watch it again and I'll come back to you. Oh, okay, she did slide out. So when you slid out, you found yourself, you did, you kind of stood your bike up on the wall where it's a little bit vertical and it's a little bit dusty. So it's going to be way slippery. What Nathan did was he had his body position and he's riding the wall around like a berm. So that's what you got to do there, Nathan's fiance. You got to try and lean over on the wall so your bike is stuck on the wall and then ride off it. You don't want to stand your bike up on the wall because it's going to end up just like that. Oh, Nathan's fiance, hopefully you are all right after that horrible little crash on that wall ride. Just remember, don't stand up your bike too early on the wall because it's got a potential recipe for sliding out just like you did there. But this is this week's Ask GMBN. Thank you for watching. If you've got any questions that you want us to answer in next week's one, please let us know in the comments down below. Likewise, send it to ask at gmbn.com where we read pretty much all of them and try and answer as many as we can in our little series. Right, if you are struggling with your bunny hops, click just over here when we potentially show you how to do that. And over here for five essential skills that you can do in a car park anywhere. Smash the globe if you haven't subscribed already because you're missing out. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up like.